The Preacher's Life by John Leland. I want to read the lyrics to this hymn, hymn number 853 in the um, Melody Publications, the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs hymn book that I reviewed on this channel. I saw this the other night. I have no idea. I'm not real great with being able to read music notes and things. I've never heard this hymn before, but I'm going to read it as it would be like a poem. It's a beautifully written by John Leland, like I said, who lived from 1754 to 1841. How arduous is the preacher's fight, what pangs his vitals feel, to preach the gospel day and night to hearts as hard as steel. While some blaspheme and show their spite and mock at all they hear, others in chase of vain delight, like adders, stop the ear. To heaven he turns his weeping eyes to antidote to spare. With broken heart and longing eyes he tries the effect of prayer. If God propitious hear his cry and some small fruit he see, how soon the hopeful prospects die, how short the jubilee. When sinners hear the Savior's voice and feel the power divine, the preacher's heart and soul rejoice to see the gospel shine. What courage, faith, and holy zeal transport his ravished breast. What inward joy his heart doth feel to see his labors blessed. But ah, how short the shining day, how soon the night appears. All those of Asia turn away, how gloomy then his fears. Great God, he cries with anxious breast, are all my labors vain? Must all the lambs and sheep of Christ to bondage turn again? <laughs> I read that probably two weeks ago or something. I've been wanting to do this video. I read that thing and I just thought, wow. <laughs> it's exactly the struggle that I go through. I've seen people and I think, man, they got saved and they're, they're really on fire for the Lord, doing great things for the Lord. And I'm all excited. They go back to the world. And I don't mean just, I don't mean, oh, they left my ministry or something. Whatever. Um, I mean, they went back to the world. They go back to drinking. They go back to uh, just everything. They reject the Bible. Oh, I was in that cult, a Denlinger cult or something, and then they just leave and, and that's it. And the frustration of that. And I say, well, it's, you know, I mean, the end times and that's just the way it is now. People in the past were really good and then I read that and I think, hmm, isn't that interesting? Here a man that was, he probably, I don't know when it, he wrote it. Uh, it was in the Baptist hymn and tune book in 1858, which is after he died. He died in 1841. But he could have written in the, in the late 1700s, um, maybe in the 1800s, early 1800s before he died. Uh, I don't know when he wrote it. But that was a long time ago. And you would think people would be a lot more fervent back then. And I'm sure that they were in many ways. But he experienced that back then. Um, if he could only see the way it is now. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I remember reading about D.L. Moody. Um, this book right here, The Life of D.L. Moody, Dwight L. Moody by his son. Well, D.L. Moody by his son. I was looking at the spine here. But this book was... This one was written in 1899. Um, it's been rebound, but you can see where it's been rebound up there. See the old spine they glued it onto this new hardback book. You can see right there where it's glued on. But uh, rebound book, and, and I read this book years ago, and I remember um, D.L. Moody talking about how that um, most of his converts didn't work out. There he is right there. So drop a bunch of papers. There's D.L. Moody. And um, I have another thing over here. Let me grab these papers quick. Let's see if I can reach. Oh, I can't reach it. Um, page 217. Let's see if I can find this quote quick. But a lot of the old preachers, they talked about this. They would say about how that a lot of times their converts just wouldn't work out. You know, D.L. Moody supposedly led a, a million people to the Lord. A million people came forward to make decisions. And, um, and yet, uh, a lot of them turn out to be fake. Well, I have uh, 
55,000 plus subscribers right now. Praise the Lord, that's great. But I think a lot of them are fake. It's interesting because my subscriber number is going up and yet my support is going down as time goes by. It's not a good sign. But uh, it says here, page 217, um, one of the you know, sermons that, that uh, Moody gave, he says, quote, Talk of being sickened at the sight of the world's degradation. Ah, let those of us who are Christians hide our faces because of our own and pray God to deliver us from the guilt of the world's blood. I believe that if there is one thing which pierces the master's heart with unutterable grief, it is not the world's iniquity, but the church's indifference. And I have that printed right over there. I have it here on my desk where I can look at that and remember that. The world's indifferent, or the church's indifference, excuse me. People being indifferent to sin. Um, it's expected that the lost world will be in sin and, and messing around and things with iniquity. That's expected. You just kind of say, well, yeah, that's what happens. But the thing that's very saddening to me is when I see people that come along and they seem to be doing so good and then the devils come into the comment section and the devils do whatever. I can't cover everything. I got, I've got, you know, a lot of videos out there and um, they'll come along and they'll say, actually, the King James Bible has errors in it. Did you know it's got an error on every page? <laughs> which is ridiculous <laughs> but it's got it's got errors and did you know that the, there will be no pre-trib rapture you know or resurrection before the time of jacob's trouble and are, actually the church is going through it we have to endure the end to be saved and don't you know that the events of revelation already happened in the first century and don't you know that the catholic church is the one true church and the, you know and on and on and on and i see people huh you know and, and i think whatever happened to so and so oh they're no longer supporting the ministry Hmm. Whatever happened? Oh, they're going back to the world. Uh, okay. Hmm. Um, this one here is gone. That one there is gone. This one here, they read James White's book and he destroyed their faith in the Word of God. Even though there's others that you know answer James White's books, but yeah, you know, it's funny how people will go and they will listen to a heretic like James White or John MacArthur or some of these other heretics. They'll listen to them and they'll get their faith destroyed. But you say, okay, but here's a guy that answers their heresies. Oh, I don't have time to study that stuff. Well, then what's really the problem? You're looking for a way out. See, I'm not the standard of truth. The Word of God is the standard of truth. So, oh, I, I had my faith in uh, Brian Denlinger's teachings destroyed so by so-and-so over here, and he, he exposed Brian Denlinger as a false prophet or something like this. Brian rejects the Trinity. You know, <laughs> uh, okay, well, does the Bible line up with the Trinity teaching. No, it doesn't. Well, maybe it's not Denlinger's teaching then. Maybe it's the Bible teaching. Maybe I should just say, you know, I'm thankful for Brother Brian. That's wonderful, and he does a great job in things. I've learned a lot from him. But you know what? Uh, this is the standard, and you're not going to take this book away from me. That's the way it should be. Well, Brother Brian doesn't believe that the earth is flat. Oh, heresy. Oh, no. The shape of the earth. Yeah, let's divide over that. They did that all through the book of Acts. I remember. Uh, uh, actually, they didn't. But, you know. <laughs> people leave this ministry for the dumbest reasons. I'll tell you what. People used to faithfully support this ministry. People used to faithfully pray for this ministry and everything else. And they leave because I don't believe the earth is flat. <laughs> or some other stupid reason. <laughs> Terrible. But, you know what? It brings comfort to me. It's... The old hymns aren't just for pretty singing and I like the song. Or Read the old hymns. They're amazing. And you'll see that fellowship of the Spirit with people that wrote these hymns hundreds of years ago. What a blessing. What a, you know, what fellowship. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 61. I'm just going to go to one place in Scripture today for this little video here about the preacher's life, the hymn, Isaiah 61. Well, our pastor, he likes everybody, and he's got lots of people in the church, and they never leave. They just stay there all the time. Well, then he's false. <laughs> then he's false. If your preacher isn't hated by anybody, then he's false. Jesus was hated by people. Jesus was put to death on the cross. And your preacher's better than that? I don't think so. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord 
God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. You say, well, that sounds really positive. I'll keep reading. <laughs> he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. You see the positive, the pros and the con, or the, the positive and the negative there, excuse me? You see the good and the bad? You see it? Hey, I'm going to heal up the brokenhearted, and I'm also going to talk about the vengeance of God. <laughs> Has to be there. Verse 3. Um, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Glorify Jesus Christ. That's why people come to me and say, Brother, I really appreciate your, your preaching. Praise the Lord. That doesn't mean, well, thank you. Well, you, you know, I'm sure it's a pleasure for you to meet me. You know, no, praise the Lord. Give that praise to him. I don't want it. I can relate to the elders, the 24 elders, you know. Lord gives them a crown and, and he gets on his throne and they say, right back at you. Throw it. I'm a screwball. I'm a, a nut. I've done so many dumb things in my life. I'm just saying it for effect. No, I actually mean it. <laughs> if you get around, I'll tell you a little story here. Right before I did my preaching this today, I had my my uh, H2 recorder, this thing right here. I had it sitting on this little tripod. I never use this tripod for this, but my son, he's learning photography, so he has my other tripod right now. And, and, um, and so I had... I, put the tripod there, hooked up the H2 recorder thing to it, and then I did something else, moved one of my lights here or something, and, and I thought, okay, now where's that recorder at? I need to get that recorder. And I was looking over here on my desk, and I'm looking through things and walking over this way and looking in my camera box. It's down on the floor that I take when I go do outdoor sermons, and I'm looking over here and lifting up things on my desk over here, and I, where's the <laughs> stupid things already hooked up to the tripod. And I start praying, I, Lord, I don't know where it is. I have to get to these sermons. I'm losing time here. It's probably been 10 minutes and I'm looking for this HT recorder. And the Lord just kind of went, mm -hmm. you know, look towards the table. Oh, <laughs> just kind of, oh, I'm so dumb, Lord. You know, please have mercy on me. You know, I'm glad the Lord has mercy for dumb people because then I qualify. But um, I'm sure you can relate out there if you're saved. But, um, you know, I love that hymn. That's a great hymn. Hopefully someday I can hear the music to it or, or whatever, you know. Um, but it really, I really relate to that. And I, it's an encouragement to know that a guy, you know, uh, over 200 years ago went through the same thing. Um, that's pretty encouraging to me. Um, and I'm a preacher. You're not all preachers out there. But you know what? If, uh, if you're saved, then according to Scripture, God has committed to you the word of reconciliation. You're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. In your own way, God has you preach to certain people in your life. And you'll see it. <laughs> Get ready for the heartache, the heartbreak. Say it that way, too. You will see it. You'll see a relative. You'll see a friend. You'll see whatever, and they're doing good. And you think, they're going to be in heaven. Praise the Lord. And then all of a sudden, off the cliff. You know, and I don't just mean, you know, they messed up or something, they sinned. Or, I'm talking total rejection of the Lord. Don't talk to me about that stuff. Yeah, I used to be into that. I'm not anymore. And you need to come out too. You're in a cult. And I mean, total rejection. Not just a, a backsliding or something. No, they totally reject the Lord. Um, you know, my uncle on my mother's side, uh, he was that way. He used to carry his Bible with him. He'd go to school and he'd carry his Bible and they called him Parson Fry. You know, he hates God, hates the Bible. And um, you'll see it. You will see it eventually. Um, so uh, just be encouraged. It's been happening for a long time. That hymn proves it. And, uh, you know, if you've, let me just say this, if you've, 
left this ministry and you're back here just kind of watching the videos and things and you say, well, I still tune in just to see what he's doing and whatever else. Um, you need to pray about that, okay? If I'm a heretic, then you leave and you don't come back. All right, if you're back and you're saying, I'm going to watch, but I'm not going to support him and I'm not going to do whatever else, I mean, ultimately it's between you and God. I can't control that. I can't just know who's out there that I don't like or something and, and just go and block everybody that I don't like. I'd never get anything else done. Um, but what kind of rewards do you think you're going to be getting at the judgment seat of Christ? And I've had people, you know, I've, praise Lord for you, you know, that you'll write back and you'll say, hey, brother, I, I called you a heretic and I came out and I hated your guts and I was trying my best to destroy your ministry and I was wrong to do it and please forgive me. You're forgiven. I forgive every one of you. I love you in the Lord. Uh, there's not one of my subscribers out there that I hope someday I don't see them in heaven, that I'm thinking I hope that they don't make it. <laughs> Why would I ever think that? Uh, far from it. I want to see all of my subscribers. I'd like to be able to get up there. You know, you have these meet and greets or whatever else. I'd like to have a meet and greet when we get called up to be with the Lord. I'd like to get up there and I'd like to say, whatever the subscriber count is, I don't know what it's, over 55,000 now. Thank you to those who subscribe, but I'd love to be able to get up there and just say, okay, 55,000 people, they're all saved. Praise the Lord. Man, that'd be great. You know, and Lord says, oh, Brian, I'm so impressed. No, he'd just say, oh, good job, dummy. You know, <laughs> In spite of you being such a uh, bumbling buffoon, you know, these people got saved because you held up my word as the final authority, not yourself. That's the point of this ministry. Um, praise the Lord out there um, you will see that if you ever meet me in public I'm out at a store you see me outside here you stop by and hey just want to say hi real quick I really means a lot your ministry really means a lot to me or something like that and I will say praise the Lord because that's truly what I believe I want the Lord to be praised I want the Lord to be glorified um, so that will be it. Just thought I'd share that old hymn. And there's a lot more good hymns in that hymn book there. Again, I highly recommend it if you haven't seen the video where I reviewed it. Um, but that will be it. And we'll see you in upcoming videos. As always, as I always say, genuinely mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And thank you for watching.